Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and here I'm joined with Lars Karlström. He's the CEO and founder of Italvolt. Lars, thanks a lot for joining us here today. Thank you, Chris. A great pleasure and a great supporter of your show. And I like to give you some insight about our, our initiative here in Italy. Brilliant. Yeah. So speaking of which, what, tell us a little bit more about yourself and, of course, Italvolt as well. Yes. Uh, well, for sure, I have a long experience of being an entrepreneur and uh, uh, also the founder of Bridgevault. And uh, since I left there, I started uh, Italvolt. And uh, uh, I've been uh, for 10 years in the automotive industry uh, uh, with various uh, functions in uh, terms of uh, projects. I was also one of the leading force behind the uh, saving Saab automobile, which uh, unfortunately didn't end in the way we wanted it. But anyway, we kept it alive for a couple of more years. So it, uh, it was good. It's very, a lot of very interesting period in my life. And uh, we had a lot of great people who are trying to support and help. But it's uh, uh, from time to time, things are, are not going in the way you really want them to be. But now we are in a better, better place. And uh, we are uh, here in Italy. In, uh, I'm currently in Milano today where we have our head office and uh, uh, we are building our factory outside Torino and it's uh, in a place called Scarmagno, which is the former site of uh, Olivetti. Uh, Olivetti, as you do know, was the Silicon Valley of Europe back in the days and uh, it has been in decline, unfortunately, for 30 years and this is a revival of the, of the area and uh, we like this uh, story where you can actually rebuild and uh, recreate and uh, really contribute to the change where we actually now are, are bring back prosperity and, uh, and, uh, and uh, jobs to the area. And uh, we are building a 45 gigawatt factory and, uh, and the space is uh, 350,000 square meters, which brings it to one of the largest footprints in the world. So it's... Uh, it's a huge, it's a massive operation and uh, it's a very exciting project for us. We have great support from Italian government, from uh, local government, uh, local stakeholders and uh, it's a very, very exciting time here. And it's, um, as we are the only player more or less in Southern Europe currently, it uh, makes it even more exciting and interesting. So you've answered a few of my questions in one, which is great. Yeah, well, one of the things I was going to ask is in terms of the incentives that um, Italvolt is getting or other, obviously, other companies, I guess that would be for other companies to comment on. But um, in terms of the Italian government, why um, why are they pushing for that sort of revival? Is there, is there a reason why that's happening? And is there a reason why you guys then chose Italy over other countries? For sure. I think also, I mean, uh, Italy is for sure a bit complicated place to build uh, such huge factory. It hasn't happened for the past 70 years for sure, uh, anything in this size in this area, which makes it also more interesting and uh, and also competition is lower. We have a high bureaucracy here in Italy, which uh, scare away a lot of investments, but I think it's about to change. Uh, as you do know, uh, the Italian recovery fund is, uh, is massive. It's uh, 220 billion and uh, a big chunk of this money will be used for, for reorganizing the country and to support, uh, support the green investments. And uh, for sure, this is one of these kind of initiatives that will be ideal to, to, uh, to bring Italia Italy back to to a new uh, space, more or less. I mean, the, Italy has a great opportunity to become a leading force in the new green industrialization. I think, it, so from that perspective, this is a very, very interesting initiative. And and uh, as I said, for me personally, I I like these things where you can actually make this change. That's the most rewarding thing you can ever do. It's uh, for sure we are all interested in making money and. Um, uh, become successful but I mean all these things when you can change the life for tens of thousands of people it's, uh, it's such a rewarding and amazing experience. That's amazing and so do you um, for the batteries that you'll be producing um, I know you will be mentioning that you'll be producing it for some of the Italian manufacturers but will the batteries then also be exported outside of Italy or are they going to be purely just for the Italian market? 
Uh, as you do know, um, there are a very good location in Southern Europe. We reach a number of countries, including France, Germany, uh, which is probably the largest uh, possible off-takers for us. And uh, for sure also, there are a lot of, of manufacturing here in Italy. Uh, Stellantis have for, sure, for sure have their own aspirations of building battery factories themselves. But still, it's, uh, the demand for batteries is massive and huge. Uh, so we need a lot of these factories also here in Italy. Italy, it's not, we cannot just have one factory. I mean, this uh, 45 gigawatt factory will be able to produce batteries for around 550, 600,000 cars, maybe. I mean, and also in a market where you, in Europe where we produce 18.6 million cars. So, I mean, it's, it's a very, very, even if it's a 3.4 billion euros investment, we can only support up to 600,000 cars. So, I mean, it's... Um, Gives a quite good idea on how many of these massive industrial projects which is needed for 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 the market in Europe in general. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's it's um, the massive uptake in EVs. I I know it from seeing all the manufacturers moving towards EVs, obviously due to government pressures. But then, yeah, obviously they need to have that supply. So um, yeah, on on the notion of supply, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the forty five gigawatt hour? claim or shall i say the the size and magnitude yeah. of that could you put that in perspective for viewers yes sure i mean it, like i said uh, this 45 gigawatt is batteries for only i said now only but it's, it's just six hundred thousand cars which is uh, uh, still a lot but i mean also compared to the investment it's uh, you could probably expect it to be more as this is by far the largest industrial project in italy and uh, so i think for many I mean, people in, in general, they don't understand how, how huge this is. I mean, this is the, we're actually going to transform the whole oil industry and then turn it into electric and batteries. And uh, this is a massive change. And it's a huge uh, operation to make all this happen. It will take years. I mean, for sure, even if we now uh, expect to be in, pro uh, in production in 2024, we will not have the capacity of 45 gigawatt in 2024. It will take years before we're reaching the, the top capacity. So from that perspective, it's, it's going to be, uh, how should I say, uh, I would say up to two, between 15 to 20% uh, 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 Lack of demand, uh, lack of lack of supply. Actually, so it's uh, so. Therefore, the the demand will be so much higher than the supply for for many years to come. One issue for sure is the technology. It's it's going to change, and therefore we also try to future proof our factory to be able to uh, to uh, accommodate new technology later on. It's very important because it's um, uh, we know solid state is coming. Is coming in in five years time or ten years time, but for sure it will change and will not be the lithium ion batteries that we intend to produce today. So uh, from that perspective, it's um, it's very interesting and but also very demanding on the engineering because we need to uh, to uh, to uh, like I said, future proof the factory and the production and that's very demanding for the engineers and that's something that we're struggling with right now and uh, working very intensive with to uh, sort these things out absolutely and um, um on that i think a lot of people have this um notion or so i say worry specifically those people who are very much petrol heads um they say about like the whole supply chain is not eco-friendly um and it's not green and the actual production and mining of the lithium-ion batteries or even you know when it comes to solid state batteries they'll be using some sort of um, raw materials. Um, can you give us a little bit more of insight of that specifically with Italvolt um, in terms of their production, your production, should I say? I mean, for sure, it's uh, a, the sustainability in the supply chain is demanding. It's always, I mean, especially from the mining perspective, where are we not maybe have full control right now, but we are we are trying to 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 have it and to find the right suppliers for us which actually share our vision of having this circular economy and this this uh, kind of green mindset that we are trying to establish. We are working with Tuv Sud, uh, who is one of the largest certifier in the world when it comes to 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 these type of omissions. And uh, they are looking into uh, all ESG matters and uh, also the supply chain our production methods and uh, 
And I mean, all in all, we should be able to, to deliver a green certificate to our, our end users. And I see also the importance of having this certificate because I think uh, Asian manufacturers who are actually saying batteries that have been produced in Asia will have difficulties with achieving this as uh, they, are, they transport these batteries for, for very from very far away. And that put a lot of pressure on the environment and it's for sure not sustainable. So it'd be very hard to produce batteries in Asia and sell them in Europe uh, if you're gonna have a green certificate because uh, even if they do things right on the supply chain over there, they still have this long transport which, uh, which uh, create a lot of issues. And it would be very, as long as you don't have hydrogen ships or anything like that, that, that will be uh, implications for, for their production or having the green certificates. I mean, from my perspective, everything that's been done in Asia is, uh, is a dirty battery as, uh, when it's been sold in Europe. So I think it's important that we address these things. But also, as you do know, that many of these factories are heavily supported by governments and you need to have some payment back to the society and they, you get a pay, payment made in terms of new jobs. And uh, to, to get there, you need to stop the inflow for, for, for dirty batteries into Europe. So we can be able to rebuild the supply chain and, and uh, build back better, as they say. I, I think that's the real change we can do. But therefore we need some support, maybe from the European Union, British government, whatever it is who can support this process and, uh, and uh, help us with rebuilding the supply chain. And uh, to be able to do that, we need some regulations. I don't say we should uh, um, make any change in trade agreements, but let's say we put an extra uh, green tax on, on dirty batteries that's been inserted in European cars. That's interesting. That's an interesting point that, that you make there. Um, and uh, one that actually makes me think of the UK and the current uh, situation in the UK. I think it was kind of timely and we I know we organize, organized the, the interview a little while before Nissan made its announcement of transforming its Sunderland plant. Um, however, do you feel that you know, bringing it to the UK as in was never going to be an option because of government incentives and therefore Italvolt, I mean, other than the name, obviously it's Italvolt Italy, um, you know, wouldn't have been something possible in the UK versus Italy because of that reason or uh, other reasons? I, I think, uh, uh, as said, I think people don't understand how huge this is. I mean, the demand is going to be so massive. And uh, I think there are space, currently there are space for all. And I think there will be support to all this. As long as you have a valid proposal and uh, you're doing things right, I think I'm sure that the governments around the world will support these initiatives uh, if they now have uh, supporting this change as they did actually with more or less banning uh, combustion engines they also for sure need to to take this forward and uh, and uh, support the process but also let back again to the jobs i mean uh, take the opportunity to to do a, to the change and also one thing i would like to urge or uh, entrepreneurs around the world to do, build these factories in, in, in areas in decline where you can actually make a change. Don't build them in metropolitan area, areas where you have other options for jobs because these batteries should be produced uh, locally and do it in areas in decline where you can make a change. There is the real change. I think that's very important. Indeed, I think that uh, driving a change in any sort of domain is quite nice. So um, yeah, providing providing to providing jobs or providing more local produce, you know, you know, not not something that you eat, obviously batteries, but in terms of local produce, in terms of where the batteries are produced, and therefore the manufacturers in said countries don't have to import them, as you mentioned, from far the far east, for example, or far west, doesn't really matter where. Um, you know, reduces the impact on the environment. And that's ultimately the most important element of this all, right? Uh, that's why we're moving towards electric vehicles versus staying on, you know, gasoline. Um, so, yeah, I would say finally, in terms of my um, my question is, it, it kind of touches upon that. Um, how, and this might sound a bit odd, but how green is a gigafactory? In other words, while it does produce batteries, how is it 
powered itself when it comes to the production of the, um, the, the, the batteries? And I know you touched upon already the supply chain, but how green are gig gigafactories? Uh, you're, you're right, spot on there. I mean, here we have uh, something that is very demanding and that, that we really need to look into the details and, and work hard on these things because otherwise we're doing this for nothing. We're also competing with a green, a quite clean diesel. Uh, so, I mean, we need to be really good to uh, to uh, be sure that the the overall impact is uh, very very minimal uh, we are we are now relying on, on uh, uh, hydro energy uh, we have a lot of uh, these kind of, of resources here in this part of europe uh, we even uh, for sure solar power but it doesn't give so much uh, i mean if we're not building a whole solar power plant uh, we have a lot of sun here as you do know but it's uh, also interesting what we are now looking into with some collaboration partners like ABB is to look into geothermal energy as yes, where we're building the factory in cannabis is the largest geothermal area in the world so it's uh, it's also something that could add on uh, green energy for us so it's uh, so we, we are trying to address a number of resources for energy to start with which are green and uh, but I can say it's, it's everything is demanding, and especially the supply chain side, where we need to put a lot of efforts into identifying the various uh, uh, supply that we need, and also secure it. So it's uh, it becomes very uh, very uh, green and sustainable. Uh, but I foresee that we we will get there, and uh, it, it will take some time. But uh, we are not in production yet, and uh, we have started identifying the various uh, options that we have. So, Lars, thank you so much for your time. That concludes the the interview. And for those people who want some more information, uh, do check out the feature down in the description below, where there is a piece to Ital Vault and some more information about gigafactories in general. And um, yeah, Lars, thanks again for your time and enjoy the beautiful weather that you've got. I'm very much jealous of that. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Great pleasure to attend today. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lars. Thank you. All the best. Take care. Ciao. Bye.